Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the 8th day of September, year of our Lord, 2021. I do pray this finds you well on this beautiful late summer day, just the beautiful temperature outside there tonight, beautiful clear sky. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, we go to the daily lectionary, and we will read, we finished Ephesians yesterday, and we're going to turn to St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. This is the first chapter, verses 1 through 20. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with affection of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard, and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus, Christ will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. And that is the word of the Lord. So, can, you know, this, the, we see the apostolic greeting at the beginning of that. This is one of his prison epistles. He's in jail, and that, that's very obvious from the opening of this letter. I want to talk, I guess, about that tonight, his imprisonment and our imprisonments and the various situations we find ourselves in our, in our life. Notice what Paul does here. He says, you know, this imprisonment, and it's a wrong imprisonment. He's, he was accused unjustly. He's, you know, he, he shouldn't be there. But you know, that's no strength to the church that Christians who've done nothing are imprisoned. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me really has advanced to serve the gospel. It's become known throughout the whole imperial guard. Now, this is a fascinating thing that God is using Saint Paul's imprisonment. To advance the gospel. And, and, and Paul went on to talk in this sort of interesting way. He says, okay, there's people who are now emboldened to preach. Some out of rivalry, you know, I can do this better than Paul. And some out of envy. And others out of, you know, pure conviction, you know, for the truth and for the love of God. And Paul says, you know, it really doesn't matter. Because Christ is being proclaimed. <laughs> in that he rejoices. He rejoices in that. And think about your own lives. Take a minute, you know, and just reflect. And think about the situations God has put you in. Sometimes your own actions have put you in. And yet through those situations, God is still working. You know, Paul won't see, even though he's rejoicing now, 
he won't see, and the outsiders won't see, the full fruit of those labors for centuries. You know, it, it will take centuries before Christianity becomes a legal religion within the Roman Empire. It's not going to happen until the 4th century with Constantine. Um, and, and, it's, and Constantine is an interesting story because he is greatly influenced by his mother. Her name is Helena. And uh, she's a Christian. And you have to wonder, in these very high circles in the Roman government, is this, is this how Christianity came in? You know, through the imperial guard, you know, through Paul in prison. God works in strange ways. He works for good, his good. He will use your suffering, and sometimes he leads us into that suffering. Sometimes that suffering is the result of our own sin or the, the evil of those around us. But he will use that suffering for good. Never despair of that, that even in the situations in your life, which might be quite dark, that God is working. And there is joy there because we know that God is working. Really fascinating, he says, and I think that too, you know, about you know, how you know, sometimes pastors, we have a hard time getting along with each other because there's all different kinds of personalities, just like any group of people. I mean, we love each other as, as brothers in the cloth, you know, brothers in the, in the office, but still there's, there can be rivalries and jealousy and stuff like that, you know, all simple stuff, and we recognize that as such. Yet we always rejoice that the gospel is being proclaimed, you know. Always. You know, and we are very blessed in a church body that even though you know, sometimes we think, man, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? We disagree about things. Sometimes you know, sort of loudly disagree about things. We always extend the right hand of fellowship and we rejoice that you know, there's, there's not heresy. There's you know, practical things going on and things. And, um, and we are right to dialogue about some of those things. But you, know, you can rejoice that we're in a church body where... You know, pastors are faithfully proclaiming the word of Christ in their various contexts and various circumstances. And that even in sometimes things we can't understand, that the word of Christ is being proclaimed. And as God promises, that word, of, you know, that word will go out and will not return to him empty. So even when you can't see it, God is working through you. Even in the midst of suffering, God is working through you. And more on that will come up in this letter. And we'll stop there for now. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the households of your people that husband and wife, children, would live together according to your created order, that we'd see and understand the blessings there, and that we would confess this created order before our, before our neighbors and in our community as the blessing that it is, as the truth that it is, that you have blessed us with marriage between a man and a woman, uh, natural marriage, and that's what you wish us to uphold in our communities. Uh, and that uh, husband and wives would live according to your ordination of that great gift, and, and that children, too, would uh, um, live under the, the authority of their parents, and uh, uh, all would live together, um, upholding your good and gracious will. Heavenly Father, as always, we pray for those who must raise their children alone. So many people that are racked by divorce and death, and sometimes by their own decisions or the decisions of those in their lives, um, but we ask you to be with them, to uphold them. For those that are in abusive relationships, that you would, that you would uh, 
lead them to shelter and show them the way out and, and uh, for the abusive spouse that they would stop that uh, horrible behavior. Heavenly Father, help us to reach out to people in need, especially people in those situations that uh, they may find peace and safety uh, amongst your people. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with children that are raised in single-parent households that as they don't have that often that formation that is so necessary from both a mother and a father, that you would bless them with uh, what is missing in their lives uh, through family members and, and friends, particularly men and women in the church, that they may see uh, the gift of, of manhood and womanhood. Heavenly Father, we ask you that your people and their families would be a blessing to their neighbors and their communities as they uphold that light of truth and that light of Christ, that our neighbors would flock to it, that we be strengthened to defend this great gift in our communities and our school boards and our local governments uh, and amongst our neighbors as well. Heavenly Father, as always, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you. We pray for our dear brothers and sisters in Christ tonight. We pray for Sandy, for Jack, for Len, for Dennis, for dear friends of our congregation, Jason and Megan, and again, all who cry out to you. For Tony, my brother in office, that you would uh, be with his family as he is gravely ill, that you would uh, place your healing hand upon him according to your gracious will, and all these people. And all things keep all of us, but especially them mindful of your love, of your forgiveness, and the forgiveness that is bestowed upon them in Christ, and your victory even over death itself. Heavenly Father, be with those who care for them, and be with their families as well. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we still ask you to be with those who are traveling, uh, maybe those still enjoying a nice uh, long holiday weekend, and uh, maybe those returning to school, uh, things like that. But you ask, we ask you to bless them with safe travel, that they may return uh, to their homes and at the end of a nice uh, time away to those whom they love. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 725, Children of the Heavenly Father. Children of the Heavenly Father, Safely in his bosom gather, Nestling bird nor star in heaven, Such a refuge e'er was given. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children ne'er forsaketh, Is the loving purpose solely, to preserve them pure and holy. That stands as one and four, and there are four all together. Again, with hymn number 725, Children of the Heavenly Father. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a very pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.